united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. God bless you. We are so glad and we feel so blessed to know that you are sharing this time with us. Welcome to United in Christ. My name is Imelda Julieta Lozano, in charge of video production for Logos Christian Worship Center here in El Paso, Texas. Today we will have the continuation of the series, The Gradual Destruction of America. But first, let me encourage you to call our station with your prayer requests and also with your donations. Life TV is a non-commercial TV station, which means we don't sell publicity and we are the only Christian TV channel in the area. You will never see pornography or the promotion of alcohol or drugs in our channel. There are two ways you can help our TV station. First, prayer is very important. So if you could please pray for Life TV, that would be deeply appreciated. Secondly, you can also help us with your donation. Since we don't sell commercials, we rely on your financial help. Channel 38 will conduct its annual telethon, which will run from October 22nd to the 26th. We will have special guests, so please mark your calendar for this telethon. I have with me a very special guest. He's been a teacher for more than 40 years, researcher, writer, speaker, senior pastor of Logos Christian Worship Center, and my father, Reverend Jesus Lozano. God bless you. I feel honored to know you'll be sharing with us for the following half hour. My name is Jesus Lozano. I'm an ordained minister with the West Texas and Plains region of the Assemblies of God in the United States. And we welcome you to the second part of uh, the gradual destruction of America. God bless you. Last week, we talked about the Christian origins of our country. We also learned how prayer was banned from our schools and how atheism was introduced in the classroom. You mentioned also about the meaning of socialism and how it slowly has been injected into our society. Today we are going to learn about topics such as the origin of socialism and the agenda for socialism, the advancement of the agenda through socialism, the connection of socialism and the pornography industry as well as the destruction of the family. Let me start by asking Reverend Lozano the following question. Many people talk about the homosexual agenda. Everybody knows about the way it's advancing in our schools. And I'm not talking about superior learning, but our elementary and even pre-K schools. How strong has this hit our little ones? States like California, Colorado, New Jersey, Illinois, and, and some others had imposed on their elementary and kinder schools the teaching of a lesbian, gay, transgender history. They are forcing their kids to read books where they teach that you can have two daddies or two mommies instead of the father and mother family, which is God's design for families. In some cases, they are even teaching, forcing the kids to explore with their bodies, their genitals. They are pushing them to try masturbation I'm really sorry to bring this up, but we need to reveal what's happening in our children's classroom. They are exposing or even pushing our kids to explore homosexuality. Children are gullible. They will believe what you tell them. If you teach them about Santa Claus, they'll believe it. 
So this is being used uh, by certain teachers that are telling them that they might be a little girl inside a boy's body, and they will believe it. Of course, we have great teachers who love the profession and care much for our kids. I was a teacher in Mexico for over, over 25 years, and I know what I witnessed there. And sadly, the situation on our country is not different from Mexico. In Mexico, right now, it is forbidden for a Christian to try to evangelize a homosexual person. In Mexico City, if you tell someone who practices homosexuality, tell them, them about their sin and the love and mercy of God, you could go to jail and spend up to five years only for telling them that God can change them. We respect gay people. We love gay people. Actually, let me tell you this. The only entity in the world that really loves and cares for gay people in the world is the church. We preach the gospel to heterosexuals, homosexuals, moral people, non-smokers, non-drinkers, alcoholics, good people, bad people, because we have tried and we have tasted and we have found that the gospel of Christ really saves and brings you happiness and freedom. We understand and respect their rights. We recognize them. But the problem is that the people behind this agenda is trying to force us to accept it as normal. They're trying, the people behind the agenda, to corrupt our children, and we must stop this. I don't know if we will have time enough uh, to explain the origin of this agenda. If not, we will explain it in, the ne in next week's program. But you will be amazed how the socialist plan has to do with the homosexuality or homosexualization of America. Besides indoctrinating our kids at school, are there other ways evil is seducing them? Are they using other kinds of brainwashing for our children? Unfortunately, hell is sagacious, cunning. It is using people of influence such as artists, rappers, even professional athletes to seduce our youngsters into becoming anarchists, immoral. They're seducing them to accept abortion as something normal. You can see that old and new artists, actors, musicians are influencing over our youth to hate our country, to take the blessings, the freedom, the prosperity of this great nation for granted. Many of Hollywood's artists promote anarchy, witchcraft, sodomy, abortion. There's a singer named Lana del Rey that recently performed a witchcraft ritual to put a hex or a curse on the President of the United States. <laughs> well, she brags about being a witch herself. There's an intimate connection between Hollywood and witchcraft, between Hollywood and Satanism, and this is not new. Many years ago, during the silent movie era, there was a famous actor by the name of Rodolfo Valentino. It is well known that him and his wife used to practice seances where they summoned demons so they can help them in, in their performances. They practice what is known as automatic scripture, where they are possessed by a demon that takes their will and then suddenly they start to write guided by the spirit demon that possesses them. This actor and his wife changed society's view on sex. Since the Valentino's movies, society started to practice free sex, adultery, fornication, because this actor's movies showed sex as something casual, ignoring the word of God that teaches us about the sanctity of matrimony. Nowadays, we have people like Lady Gaga, which is a very famous singer that admits, she admits being possessed by a spirit that inspires her music. She constantly shows uh, what is called the Eye of Horus, which is an occult symbol. It is very normal for her to appear with horns on her performances, which we know it's a symbol for the devil. And she's friends with a renowned Satanist by the name of Marina Abramovic, 
Abramovich practices certain rituals called spirit cooking, where they bake or cook cakes made with urine, feces, uh, maternal milk, etc. I'm going to show you an excerpt of this ritual where she is pouring allegedly some pig's blood. WikiLeaks tells us that in one of that rituals, John Podesta, who was the campaign manager for Hillary Clinton, got invited since he is also a friend of Abramovich. John Podesta, manager for the campaign for Hillary Clinton. She is the guru for Lady Gaga, one of our youth most admired icons. What can we say about Beyonce, Ariana Grande, Jay-Z, and the immense majority of Hollywood's artists? They are practicing Satanism. The sad thing is that these artists are giving all their support to the left-wing party. Imagine these artists who have four or five divorces already, who are drug addicts, alcoholics, womanizers, Satanists. This kind of people are trying to tell us how to live and how to vote. It looks like there's a well-organized plan to destroy our nation. This social phenomenon that we are seeing for the last two or three years tells us that there must be a brain an organism that is planning and even funding this turmoil. A little over a year ago, our nation was invaded by thousands of Central Americans that came into the United States demanding asylum. They traveled thousands of miles through different countries. Who sponsored this movement? It is impossible that thousands of individuals that don't know each other suddenly decide to come. Sociologists agree that they were organized and funded by groups that want to destabilize our country, and I believe this is very possible. We have seen also groups of anarchists that are demanding social justice, and they express their unconformity by burning houses, businesses, and even churches. Many claim that the socialist agenda is behind these groups, such as Black Lives Matter and Antifa, and their only objective is not social justice, but to destroy the foundation of this great country. What is the plan for these groups? Why do they want law and order to disappear? What is socialism? Well, uh, let me start by answering your last question. What is socialism? Socialism is a doctrine or government system that allegedly looks the way to make people equal, no rich and no poor. That sounds great, but it only sounds good because in practice, it just doesn't work. It is unfair. Socialism's intention is to take from the rich and give it to the poor. Watch now. Take away the money and the resources from the people that have worked hard all their life, money that they have saved, invested, worked for. Destroy their dreams, their efforts, and give that money or those resources to people that don't have any, even if they don't work and they don't want to work. That is socialism in a nutshell. In socialism, the government is the owner of everything. They say that the people are the owner of the means of production, but that is not true. In socialism, it is the government who decides what to give to the people. You can't save money on socialism. You can't open a business. You cannot prosper in socialism. They say that everything belongs to everybody. Sounds good, but the truth is nothing belongs to everybody. This system makes people to depend on government. Government fits them. Government pays for the clothes, the housing, etc. This doesn't bring prosperity to a country. This brings poorness to the people. You cannot aspire to a nicer home or a nicer car because everything is given which, by the way, is not giving. You have to work very hard 
to get sometimes, if you're lucky, an old, an, an old car, and many times not even there, that. While the politicians have nice homes, they have the best hospitals, they live luxurious lives, and this happened in, in countries like Cuba, Venezuela, and even the Soviet Union. One of the ways socialism works is to make people dependent of the government. They, they are slaves of the government, and the government determines your salary, which is miserable. A laborer in Cuba receives approximately $50 per month as a salary. Believe me, we don't want this for the United States. Now, let me show you a picture that I got from the Internet where a Cuban citizen writes the food that they are allowed to purchase by month. 3.5 kilos of rice. That's approximately 7 pounds of rice per month per adult. 2.5 kilos of sugar. Half a kilo of beans. 230 grams of oil, 10 eggs, I'm talking per month, half a kilo of chicken, half a kilo of pasta, 115 uh, 15 grams of coffee, and one daily piece of bread. The children receive a quart of a gallon of milk daily. This letter claims that more than 70% of the Cuban people have been living under this system since 1962 when the socialist government took over. What can we say about Venezuela, another South American nation that is under the socialist regime? Let me read you an excerpt from the webpage of SAI, the South America Initiative, which is a non-governmental organism that helps nations in need. And I quote, Malnutrition in Venezuela has augmented dramatically. Protein in Venezuelan families has diminished drastically. All the sectors of this country have been affected by this terrible crisis. There's a lack of antibiotics, medicine for cancer, and many others that are necessary to sustain life. Venezuelan hospitals are chaotic. The diet for the patients consists only of rice. Biological mothers can't feed their babies and many newborn babies, babies have died due to the lack of medicine. Many of the babies that made it are abandoned on dump sites or left at the entrance of orphanages. Many orphanages are receiving more babies than they can handle. Now, listen to this. Pay attention. The Venezuelan government, remember, it's a socialist government, hasn't provided the necessary help, and they won't accept. They won't accept the humanitarian help that other countries have offered. As you can see, socialism doesn't work. Socialist countries are hungry. They are driving cars from the 1940s or 50s. Their houses are falling. In Cuba, some of the girls go out and practice prostitution, selling their bodies for some toothpaste, soap, jeans, and many other things that they cannot get under the regime of the Castros. This is the reality of socialist countries. What a dramatic scene. It's dramatic, but it's real. Just go and Google for pictures or videos on Cuba or Venezuela, and you will find out this is true. They are hungry and they are sick, and when other countries offer their help, they reject it. At least that's what's happening in Venezuela. But is socialism threatening America? There's a man named Curtis Bowers. He's a former politician from the state of Idaho. He released a very interesting documentary named Agenda, Grinding America Down, which I recommend. On his documentary, 
He tells that while being a student at Berkeley University in California in 1992, he got invited to a meeting held by a communist group. This reunion was about the planning of taking America. Bowers narrates that when he heard that meeting, it sounded like fantasy. He didn't believe it. Fifteen years after the meeting, things started clicking. He started seeing changes in our society that made him remember what he heard at that socialist reunion. There's an agenda for destroying America, Bauer tells it. He said that in this documentary, some of the steps socialists were going to take to introduce socialism into America were the following. Number one, the destruction of marriage. They would change the minds of couples so they can decide just to live together without getting married. Number two, they would take the parents out of their children's education. That means that the government would take over and be in charge of educating our kids and parents wouldn't have anything to do with their education. Number three, they would use the radical feminist movement as a way to destabilize the nation. Number four, the use of environmentalist regulations to shut down many businesses. Number five, at this reunion, they say that to destroy society and religion, they would introduce the acceptance of homosexuality by the Americans. Once accepted, this will start extinguishing the moral values of this nation. Unfortunately, their plan worked. The American family is disintegrating. The environmental movement is closing down businesses under the excuse that they're contaminating, leaving thousands without jobs. There's a book written by an XBI agent, uh, his name is Cleon Skosen, by the name of The Naked Communist. In this book, the author shows 58 steps that the socialist agenda intends to use in the socialization of our country. I'm going to mention only eight of those steps. Number one, eliminate prayer from schools, arguing that church and state must be separated. Number two, to destroy the institution of family and promote promiscuity and divorce. Number three, take control over schools and use them as a mechanism of control and transmission of communism using the teachers. Number four, eliminate the laws that govern censorship, alleging that it violates freedom of expression. That means everything goes. Foul language, immorality that your kids can watch on TV. Number five, to destroy moral standards with the promotion of pornography using books, magazines, and movies, including the ones showing on TV that your kids can look. To present homosexuality and promiscuity as something natural and healthy. Number seven, to use media and artists, actors, musicians to promote their agenda. And number eight, to infiltrate the church and change its message, replacing the preaching of the gospel for a social religion. We have been looking at this for the past years, and the church needs to do something about it. How is it that socialism infiltrated our schools? Who pioneered this movement into our education? Since 1930, many socialist scholars started coming to the United States from Europe. People like Bertrand Russell, Willie Munzenberg, Franz Newman, and others. Their purpose was to infiltrate our educational system. Russell said this, using certain psychological techniques in children, I can convince them that snow is black and they will believe it. And that is what they're doing with our children and our school system. They are not teaching them that snow is black, but they are teaching that 
that there are girls in the body of a boy and boys in the body of girls, and they're believing it. John Dewey, the father of modern education in the United States, brought some of these socialists and introduced them to universities of Princeton and Berkeley so they could teach their philosophy. Their objectives, according to Curtis Bowers, were to teach homosexuality to our children, promote the excessive use of alcohol and the destruction of religion in the United States. Their intention was to corrupt the nation and slowly and patiently they have accomplished it. One of the many objectives for the destruction of our society was to destroy the father image and to change the patriarchal society for a matriarchal one. They want to erase the image of the head of the family, the provider, the man of honor, the wise and respectable father. Television series, movies, and even cartoons are representing fathers as morons, as useless, worthless persons whom their kids and wife mock all the time. They have been teaching this to our families through TV, and sadly, they have accomplished it. Antonio Gramsci, an Italian philosopher in 1930, said that we will destroy the West, talking about the United States, by destroying their culture. We're going to infiltrate and turn their art, their music, and their literature against them. Well, that's our program for today. We are very grateful that you took this time to watch this program, and hopefully we will see you again at the same time next Monday. My name is Imelda Lozano, and my wish is that God may bless you. Maranatha, Christ is coming. Thank you so much. This is Pastor Jesus Lozano. We hope to see you next week, same time, same day, where we will continue speaking of this topic, the gradual destruction of America. In behalf of live television and Logos Christian Worship Center, we wish you blessings and may God bless you. Maranatha, Christ is coming. Mm -hmm.